Hey guys, and welcome back to Free Plugin Friday, where we look at free plugins you can use in your productions. Now today we are looking at another Analog Obsession plugin. This one that was released in 2020, but then got an update last year in 2021, and it is the OSS Limiting Amplifier. Now this is based on the classic and highly expensive, though not as expensive as a Fairchild, 176 limiting amplifier. And that basically, you could kind of think of a predecessor to the 1176, even though it uses a completely different way of compressing, but it's a compressor from the 60s that had a really fast attack, especially compared to a lot of the other compressors at the time. I believe it was still very new, um, like the Fairchild, which does have a fairly fast attack, to be fair, uh, but this kind of was the, the punchy very new um, compressor. Lots of valves involved, obviously, for very new technology. And because of its punchiness, we're actually going to start this on drums. Now, for a lot of compressor videos, I've been putting it on the mix, especially if it's slower, more optical compression to have a look at the features. But I think drums really, really show fast compressors and kind of their uh, compressing mechanism and kind of really you can tell what the different ratios do and you can hear some of the distortion. So I think we'll try it on drums, bass and vocals today. So let's just uh, turn the power off, listen to the drums dry. Now these still have a fair bit of compression on the snare and the kick on all the individual elements. Now I did have a parallel compressor on this bus, I've taken that off, but you should just still be able to hear how this compressor works so this is without uh, 176 let's put it on and go through some of the features and while we're listening to it I'm going to talk about a few of the features first thing we're going to turn on is Oversampling, which a lot of the newer Analog Obsession plugins have. This is four times oversampling uh, by clicking on that logo. So we have Interstage, which is the internal transformers. We have a semi-gain compensated input. It's not completely gain compensated. We have four ratios, attack, release. And then this is the fun part. That's kind of more of your original plugin, original uh, hardware compressor, I mean. Uh, then you have high pass filter, mid frequency, mid gain, and a low pass uh, kind of uh, high frequency thing here uh, on the sidechain input and a wet mix control, as well as an external sidechain if you want to use this, the sidechain compressor, which is really cool. But let's start off with the attack and release controls. So, off. Now the reason we're getting that kind of delay there is because of the uh, oversampling. So I may turn it off before until we get into the interstage. There's still not a lot of uh, aliasing going on. So we're gonna turn it off just to make this easier. So straight away you can hear it's pumpy goodness. Let's have a look at the attack control. And that is so fast. wind it up and again even on the slow setting it is fast but it's good kind of fast so you can really really control and limit those peaks let's have a look at the release from the fastest And it really starts to slow down and smooth out there. Bring this back a little bit. Now this is still on the two to one ratio, don't forget. So these high release times, good for vocals and bass, but for drums, we want it kind of fast. Okay, let's have a look at the ratio controls. Oh, nice pumping going on there. 
Ahí. Twelve. A lot of distortion going on with that kind of mechanism there. It's really kind of cool. So one thing it isn't doing in uh, different compressors do this depending on their design is the ratio changes at the threshold. Now this is famous in the 1176 where you pretty much get the same gain reduction but the threshold and the uh, ratio kind of change together. This seems to just increase the ratio as you turn it up which is fine because you can use the input control to change that. Uh, threshold. Well, I mean, it's fixed threshold, but you know, the control how hard you're hitting it. Let's leave it at 8 to 1. Fairly quick attack, fairly quick release. Well, let's listen to Interstage. I might turn this down a little bit. Go back to 4 to 1 maybe. Interstage does seem to be doing something nice to the high end. Subtle though. Okay, we're going to drive it up a bit more now. We're, of course, using this to the absolute extreme to really just show the compression characteristics. On a drum bus like this, you might be only using, you know, one or two dB of compression instead of, like, 10. Um, but I really want to show that kind of character because this is what these kind of plugins are about, is capturing that kind of character and the compressor behavior. But let's have a look what we can do with this detector circuit controls. High pass filter. Okay, now the kick isn't pumping as hard. So, uh, first let's boost the mids and go through the frequency. Cutting the mids. So straight away you can hear, I think, quite easily that this mid and high pass full top really let you kind of tune what you're compressing. If you want to compress the kick, you're going to kind of bring that high pass filter down and take out some of the mids so that the cymbals and the snare aren't triggering as much and the kick's triggering it. On the other end, if you don't want the low end triggering, you put that in and you can even boost to kind of control that snare. And this is very useful not only on the drum bus, but on uh, kind of more complex instruments, on a mix bus, on anything that has a very amount of frequencies and different transients that you can kind of pick which frequencies are tricking it. For example, if you have a vocal with some really spitty high end, uh, you could, you know, boost the mids and go all the way up to, you know, 10K or something. And it's going to compress a little bit more on the high end, a little bit like a de -esser. So that's really cool to have. And let's just listen lastly to the high frequency. I think this is a shelf in that same kind of moment. Hmm. This sounds different. This sounds like it's compressing high end more. Interesting. Let's bring it down to subtle settings and have a listen here. Oh, there's so much character in this. 
Even with like one or two dB. It's really smoothing out that snare. Okay, let's uh, put that back up a little bit, maybe. Really has this nice quality to the snare, I really like it. And with the dry mix, you can uh, dial it back so a little bit more transients come through. But keeping that kind of sustain portion in there. So off. Back on. Okay, in the mix. But I can't hold my Really changes that snare. Okay, let's go put it on vocals because I think these vocals need a little bit of control. I've still got them set up from when we had Thrill Seeker in the Thrill Seeker video. Not sure if that comes out first or the OSS video will come out first, but um. Whenever it does come out, go check that one out. Okay, so let's solo these vocals up. Um, and I've taken all the compression off. So what we're going to do is just dial it in. I don't know what to say But I can't hold my tongue Cause it's so cold Here right next to you so really dynamic vocals need a lot of work. I don't know what to say. Four to one. But I can't hold my tongue because it's so cold here right next to you. Increase the release a little bit. I don't know what to say. But I can't hold my tongue because it's so Cold here right next to you. I'll take out some of that high end and push this up. I don't know what to say, but I can't hold my tongue. Okay, let's uh, bypass. So cold here right next to you. Loop. Loop. Okay, so this is off. I don't know what to say. But I can't hold my Back on. tongue Cause it's so cold Here right next to you That's control without kind of deadening it Let's listen in the mix I don't know what to say Again, like I had for the a variety of sound plugin, I'm able to get 7 or to 10 dB of reduction, really flatten out those vocals without having too much of a kind of loss of weight. In fact, there, there seemed to be more body coming in at certain parts, more consistent in the kind of... Uh, timbre of the vocals there especially because I'm not a very good singer it really kind of made up for that a little bit really really nice on vocals so lastly I want to have a look on bass because bass always needs compression and I love bass compression so I'm going to turn that off let's go let's see what we can do on bass
to use the uh, high pass filter. stage on I'm gonna listen to it with drums so this isn't off first back on adding a lot of sustain smoothing it out with drums So bypass it again. Past. Back on. So let's listen to it in the mix. Our first bite past. Sounds great on bass. Uh, it does really well with the low end. I think with the help of the high pass filter, but it doesn't do that stealing, that robbing of the low end that so many compressors do. Uh, it, it's really nice there, and it's still kind of evening it out. It seemed to make the bass sit better with the kick drum, just meld in a little bit more. So one last thing I wanted to see was grab all three of these together. Uh, this may take me a while to figure out, but let's um, put them all so we can bypass them and turn them on at the same time um, just to get a bit of an idea of what we kind of done here. Again, we're not really trying to mix this song with this. It was more just examples of different sources, but you can kind of see how useful this plugin might be, and this is only on three different uh, buses, so... I and now we turn them all on. Maybe a little bit too much on the vocals. But I can hold my tongue Cause it's so cold Here I'm next to you Bypass them all again and have a listen I don't know what to say But I can hold my tongue Cause it's so cold Drums just sound flat without it Thin Set it back on But I can hold my tongue Cause it's so cold Here I'm next to you Oh 
Okay, so that is Analog Obsessions OSS. Now, I haven't really messed around with this plugin much before today. This is kind of my first look. Um, I don't know why. I think because it's a bit more of an esoteric plugin, even though the hardware compressor, a lot of people know it. And there's like the Retro 176, which is kind of a remake of it, compared to 1176 LA-2A Fairchild G-Bus compressor. Uh, it's not something I see a lot on modern mixes, so I kind of was like, oh yeah, I'll try it at some point. And I'm really glad I did. I really like this. I don't think it will necessarily replace all my compressors, but I can see where like I really want to put it on something and definitely drums. I really like what it's doing, um, especially kind of as a Paolo drum mix. It isn't as aggressive as something like an 1176 or a Distressor, but it has this kind of mid thing going on and the detector controls really kind of allow it to be dialed in. Uh, the thing we didn't check out was the external side chain, um, but that is something you could use too. I'd be interested, maybe I'll do a completely different video on sidechain compressors for dance music and stick a couple of these in there and see if I can dial them in to get that kind of kick sidechain thing going on and see what actually gives a really cool flavor to maybe some sidechain bass or something. So thanks for watching. Go check it out at the Analog Obsession Patreon. As always with Analog Obsession, you can download the plugins for free at the moment of this video anyway. But if you give to the Patreon, of course, it helps develop these plugins. And I'll be honest, a lot of the Analog Obsession plugins um, sonically compete with some of the higher end plugins as it's a small one man operation there of course can sometimes be compatibility issues or there may be some kind of bugs that aren't ironed out as quickly which is you know what kind of makes a difference between some of the free stuff and the big paid products is they have whole teams for bug reporting and such and that's kind of what your money pays for even though I've found that some of those plugins definitely also have bugs. But for something like this where it's a one-man operation, as far as I'm aware, uh, it takes a little bit longer to get stuff like that sorted. But they do, for all you Pro Tools users, which you're probably not at this point in the video, if you are Pro Tools users, they're starting to release some stuff on AX as well. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>